Uh, September of last year, and so off and on now for about uh, six months, I guess. Uh, and every time I would get something, it's, it seemed to me to be too complicated. And so there is this book entitled, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist by Frank Turek. But above all, uh, all I got uh, from the book is the title because, well, I just felt like it was too complicated. Uh, so today's message is going to be simple. And I know none of you are atheists, but when you run into one, I want you to know that it takes a lot more faith to believe what they believe than it does to believe what the Bible says. Uh, I saw a little pamphlet one time that says God doesn't believe in atheists. So uh, I think that sums it up right there. But there really is just one reason that I believe what the Bible says and I don't have enough faith to believe what the atheists believe. And that is that the Bible is true. And what they believe is not. So with that in mind, I just want you to listen to the incredible stretch of the truth that they propagate as propaganda on how things came to be in this world. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, a long, long, long time ago, there appeared these gases in gravitational fields. And how they got there, no one knows. They just appeared out of thin air. Well, uh, not exactly out of thin air because there was no air, but out of nothing. They appeared out of nothing. And, and so right there from the very beginning, you can see that it takes a lot of belief. So just try to follow their story. Uh, I mean, scientific data. And you'll never guess what happened next. After the gases suddenly appeared, something astounding took place. There was a bang so loud that it could be heard around the world. Well, uh, not around the world because there was no world yet, but uh, it was heard. Uh, well, it wasn't really heard because there was no one to hear it yet, but it was big. And so therefore, this has since been referred to by the scientific name Big Bang. And it was complete with explosion and fire. And, and so let's review. <laughs> First, there was nothing. And then it exploded. <laughs> you got that? All right. Now, I know this might sound unscientific because there was no rational reason for it, because there was no movement, no oxygen, no heat, no match, no lighter, no ignition, no bit to flick, no nothing. Nor was there anything directing these suddenly existing elements, nor was there anyone creating or controlling these elements, nor was there any purpose, nor was there any design, nor was there any meaning. It just happened somehow. Now, no smirking, please. You see, this is all part of the scientific proof. Well, they really don't have any proof. So they came up with this word that means something you can't prove, so it's a scientific theory. And never mind that we have never, ever been able to reenact any kind of explosion that created something. You see, every explosion we've ever witnessed led to the degradation and destruction of the thing exploded, not ever leading to systems or any kind of higher order. But nevertheless, this is what they believe. And I'm just saying, I don't have enough faith to believe what they believe. But I do have enough faith to believe this. In Genesis 1.1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 says, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And verse 3 says, Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And verse 4 says, And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Verse 5 says, God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And so evening and morning for the first day. Now you might say, why do you believe that? And my answer is Romans 3, 4. 
Because it says, let God be true and every man a liar. Or Psalm 119, verse 160 of Psalm 119 says, Thy word is true from the very beginning. You see, I believe it because it's true. But let's get back to the other side of the argument. So after the Big Bang, there eventually appeared a beautiful earth with air, sun, moon, ground, and sky. There were colors and smells and sounds and wind and water and land. And so all just by plain old luck, and oh, 14 billion years or so to get us to where we are today. But these things take time. And by the way, speaking of time, the Big Bang made that too. Oh, yeah. And don't question any of this because all of this is science. But we find in Genesis 1-6, Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And verse 7 says, Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And verse 8 says, And God called the firmament heaven. And so the evening and the morning were the second day. Now the atheist says the water got there by chance, just luck. And remember he says the water somehow came from this big ball of exploding fire. I mean, think about that. Did you ever know a fire to produce water? Or what about an explosion? Did that ever make water? Hmm. Oh well. <laughs> Look in Genesis 1 14. Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. You know, the universe is of infinite size and beauty, possessing a great design. The planet Earth is replete with magnificence and grandeur and uniquely made up of elements that work together to sustain life. But don't, don't let your spirit get lifted up too much by this grandeur. Just keep repeating to yourself, the world began by chance. It was all an accident. It was purposeless and meaningless. And remember, this took place about 14 billion years ago. 13.4873221 to be exact, billion years ago. Now, one day, after many, many years of evolution, there appeared out of nowhere a cell in the primordial ooze on the earth's surface. How's that, you may ask? Well, it just happened. See, the ooze said to itself, I think I'll turn from non-living to living today. In fact, I think I'll turn into a complex single cell today. And then in a short 599.897322 million years that went by, the single cell got lonely and said, I think I'll turn into a tadpole. Or an amoeba. You see, some evolutionists differ on this, but what's the difference? Either way, the single cell organism eventually turns magically into a multi-cell organism. And now if you think that's a stretch to believe, a single cell amoeba turns into a tadpole, well, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because all of life, no matter how complex, according to the atheist, came from that lowly amoeba which magically came out of that primordial, slimy ooze. The amoeba, by the way, is so vitally crucial to the atheist that there is a poem written about it called The Ode to the Amoeba. I'll read it to you. Recall from time's abysmal chasm that piece of primal protoplasm the first amoeba, strangely splendid, from whom were all of us descended. That first amoeba, weirdly clever, exists today and shall forever because he reproduced by fission. He split himself 
in each division and subdivision deemed it fitting to keep on splitting, splitting, splitting. So whatsoever their billions be, all, all amoebas still are he. Zoologists uh, discern his features in every sort of breathing creatures. Since all of every living species, no matter how their breed increases or how their ranks have been recruited, from him alone were evoluted. <laughs> King Solomon, David, the Queen of Sheba, and Barack Obama sprang from Amoeba. <laughs> Columbus, Shakespeare, Usher, and Nellie all derived from that same bit of jelly. <laughs> So famed is he and well connected, his statue ought to be erected for you and I and Justin Bieber are undeniably all a Bieber. <laughs> Uh, here. 